What's going on, fellas? I've got a 2019 Ford Ranger here, and I'm using this truck to point out to you the location of the starter fuse, the starter relay, and some troubleshooting steps. So to start with, we're gonna pop down here. There's an important fuse here for the ignition switch. Whether you've got push to start or a key that you turn, we've gotta check this out. So pop this piece open. And what we're looking at is fuse number 18. This is actually an interesting fuse because it's two fuses in one. We're gonna pull this out. You'll note that there's three pins. The, the center pin and the right pin are the ones that link up to the ignition switch. The center and the left pin are not used. And what's cool about this is if you examine this fuse and you find that it's blown on the right side, you can flip this over and then reinstall it. So definitely that's a good starting point there is to check that fuse first as if it's blown or if it's missing, then the ignition switch will not operate the car. Now let's head under the hood. This is where we'll find the starter relay and the starter fuse. And I'll give you some more troubleshooting steps. You know, it goes without saying while we're here, examine the connections to the battery, make sure they're clean and tight, corrosion free. So these look excellent. You can also test the battery as well. Now the starter relay is at the top, the starter fuse is at the bottom. Uh, if you don't know how to access this stuff, see my other video on how to access the uh, fuses. I'll put a link down below. The starter fuse is gonna be this 30 amp fuse right here. This provides power to the starter relay that is then sent on to the starter solenoid when the relay is engaged. If you find that this is blown and you need to swap in another one, you can use this one temporarily. This is the windshield wiper fuse. Now the starter relay is going to be this one right here. It is computer controlled. The computer detects when you're trying to start the car and it will run through its anti-theft check. And if you pass, then it will engage this relay. Now my favorite way to troubleshoot this relay is to have someone try to start the truck. And while they're doing that, I'll tap on the relay. I'll also grab it and wiggle it a little bit. Sometimes relays can get stuck and by tapping the relay or wiggling it, you can free it up. Beyond that, further troubleshooting, we'll pop the relay out. Sometimes relays fail, and what we can do is we can swap in an identical relay. So we'll go with the one right underneath it. This is the blower motor relay. So if we take this blower motor relay and put it in the position of the starter relay, and then the truck starts, then we know that the relay that we took out is probably no good. After swapping the relays and tapping on them, uh, sometimes further troubleshooting is needed. And I'm gonna show you some information about the pins where, this, where the relay plugs into. So the two pins on the right side, if you connect these two pins together, you will be sending power directly to the starter solenoid. So that's something you just wanna do as a troubleshooting step. Uh, you can just briefly connect these two pins and the engine should turn over. Assuming that the starter is good, that the battery is good, and that your connections are good, and also that your engine is not seized. Now, be careful if you do that. Um, make sure that the car or the truck is in park. Make sure that nobody's hands are anywhere near the engine. It could be a safety issue. So, um, yeah, connecting those two pins together is what the relay does when the computer engages it. Now, when the computer engages this relay, it does so by providing a voltage potential between these two pins. So if you never measure 12 volts here, even when you're trying to start the truck, then there's a good chance that there's an issue with maybe the ignition switch or maybe the neutral safety switch. This relay will not be powered on by the computer if the computer thinks that your truck is not in park. So if that's the case, you may need to get a scan tool so you can talk to the computer and figure out more about what's going on. So yeah, I hope that this information was a good starting point for you in troubleshooting the truck. Please let me know if you have any questions, or more importantly, if you've got any advice about troubleshooting the starter on your Ford Ranger.